Okay, and our last one. So again, first thing, impact. Where do your eyes go when you look at this image for the first time? Sometimes cover your eyes and then look, or do like the pros do, flip it upside down. My eyeballs go right down here. What about you? Hello, thanks for tuning in to another image critique here on the Boudoir Guild. My name is Mike Lloyd. I've been a professional photographer for 12 years, teaching for 10 of those, and I'm a certified PPA print competition judge, which means I've been trained in how to actually critique images. I've done it all over the country, both in person and online, and I love this process because I believe it's the best way to learn how to be a better photographer. Obviously, hands-on workshops, practice, totally invaluable, nothing can replace those, but feedback given during image critiques amazing because even if it's not your image, you can learn a ton from it. And this isn't about a score. This isn't a competition. This isn't rankings. This isn't any of that. This is strictly about learning. So let's dive in. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go through four different images today, and I love doing this in Photoshop because I get to use the paintbrush tool here to mark up the images like I'm John Madden watching a football game. Alrighty, so a couple of these were sent in as uh, an experiment from a newbie photographer who wanted to use Christmas lights as a light source, which I think is super cool. I've done it before, it's a ton of fun, you can get really creative, do it any time of year for cool effects. Um, so I'm gonna go through, I know I got a couple of those and a couple other non-holiday ones. So uh, we got a good variety of photos here today. Okay, so the first thing we look at as a competition judge is impact and where do our eyes go? And our brains read the brightest, the sharpest, and the highest contrast parts of the images first. That is where our brains say is the most important piece of an image. So when I look at this photo, the thing that really jumps out at me is right down here because of the contrast of the colors, uh, how bright they are compared to everything else. However, the reflection on the floor, I'm assuming is not the intended focus of this image. Again, this was an experiment from a brand new photographer, uh, but this is gonna be great for anyone else who wants to play with this stuff as well. So a couple things I always look for, straight horizon lines. And if I bring my grid up here, you can see that horizon line is very straight. So well done. Also crop lines, you're at the perfect point here. You're at a good point here. The balance of the image though is down here. There's a lot of weight. And by weight, I mean the brightest, most impactful part of an image, whereas the subject of the image is up here. So that's why we wanna control the reflections on the floor compared to the rest of the image. And it could be as simple as, let's see if we do an adjustment layer here, drop that down a little bit, and then mask off part of the image. There we go. By darkening the bottom of the frame, now the top stands out a bit more compared to before when it was really bright. So that is something that you can always do to bring more focus to the main part of an image. That's why they have vignettes, but don't go crazy. Uh, they can definitely be overdone. So like it took me a second to look at the image. Like I'm just pulling these up for the first time with you. I can see her face is over here and the body kind of curves. I don't dislike the pose, I think it could be great. It's cropped in a really weird place, like through the butt cheek. This one, this cheek is right at the top of the frame. Just the very tip of her head is being cut off over here. Like this crop is way too tight on her. She feels, it feels like she's crammed into this box and the real focus of the image is, I don't know, just this weird part of the body here. I think this could have been Cooler if it was cropped outward more. Also just again, like weird rando lights. You gotta be careful where you're placing these sorts of lights. They're not totally random. Like these ones by the face could have been hidden if the face wasn't a part of this. Um, but again, we're like losing the whole hand, the shoulder, the top of the head. There's no separation from the background. And if you're thinking, well, how do you get separation with background or with Christmas lights? 
that's part of the challenge, right? Is we have to figure out how to use lights to flatter our client and to separate them from the background because it's really tough to see where the head stops and where the shadows in the tree begin. Also, we've got texture and contrast and light back in the tree here uh, that totally takes away from our subject. So I don't dislike the pose. It's just hard to see what's going on because the wrong parts of the images are lit and it's cropped in really, really tightly. So give people some room to move when you're cropping. Uh, otherwise, the image just feels claustrophobic. Okay, next photo. I think I only picked two with the Christmas lights, by the way, so they're not all like this. Okay, so again, first thing that I see is right here. And one of the ways that we check this as judges, and I do this with my own work, I flip the image upside down so we don't have the context of the photo anymore. It's just brightness, it's colors, it's shapes, it's lines. And again, the first thing I see is this area right down here because that's the brightest with the most contrast. I like the way her face is positioned. I like the look on her face. And if we pull up the grid here, she's pretty close to being on that third. She just needs to move over this way a tiny bit so that the center part of her face right here, that dividing line is gonna be right along this grid line here. Um, doing that will, will clean up the composition. That's the word I was looking for. Um, but again, these lights are so bright over here, it's totally taken away from the subject. And when you have this much texture from the tree, from the lights, from the outfit, we totally lose the person, which is you know, the, the focus of the image. And same thing with like the fuzzy blanket she's laying on. There's so many different textures going on here. It's hard to tell what the most important thing is in the photo. So again, I, I don't dislike the pose itself. It's just the lighting doesn't do it any, any justice. And the tree over here, the tree shouldn't be there. It's just unwanted texture and lines and shapes uh, that, that crowd the image. They don't add to the image. And one of the things that I love doing in a photo is when I set up my scene, every single thing that it is or is not in the photo must be intentional. So if I have a lamp in the background, is it on or is it off and why? Literally everything in the photo should be considered if you add things or if you remove things. So yeah, having these branches here isn't adding to the image. It's just more texture, it's more shape, it's more distraction from our subject. Um, but you see there's a lot more room on the sides here. And she's also looking into the open part of the image. This helps it feel a lot less cramped. If her head was turned the other way, if her face was right here and she was looking into the, the corner of the frame with this much empty space behind her, that would feel really closed off. So think of the sides of the frame like walls. When you're in a room and your back is against the wall, you have the whole room open in front of you and it feels entirely different than when you're standing facing the wall. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay. So first thing we look for, again, impact. Uh, and where do your eyeballs go? And for me, they go right here because it's the brightest, it's the sharpest, and it has the most contrast in the scene, which is great because that's the part of the image we should be looking at. Pose-wise, love it. Like we've created this wonderful triangle here. We've created triangles over here. Excellent composition. We throw the grid lines on. She is center weighted. We've got crops through. Um, you know, between hips and the bust line. I mean, technically we're cropped through a knee right here, but because she's got these dark tights on, it's not as prominent. I'd say if she didn't have them on, her legs were more noticeable, there was more weight down here. And again, weight in the image, as in weight of compositional elements, not as in her body weight, uh, that would be a different story, but I'm, I'm not bothered by that. Uh, boots are a nice touch. They kind of pop a little bit because we lose so much detail in the shadows right here. So I would have wanted to recover these shadows to bring back some of that detail because like the legs blend into one another. We can't really tell when one stops and the other starts. Same thing back here. We lose separation from the leg to the black material of the couch. So when you're shooting dark things on dark things, especially like this top 
and these leggings that don't reflect any light at all, you got to make sure you have something around them that can create highlights. So you go shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight, and, and you get that separation between the elements. I love the facial expression. The cheekbones are carved out beautifully. Everything looks sharp. Uh, the hands are nice and soft right here. Absolutely love that. This is a beautiful image. And there are things going on in the background. You have these pipes, you have this box over here, you have a window, uh, more pipes, but none of them are distracting. They're out of focus enough that they give context and they add depth to the image without taking away. Uh, shallow depth of field here, which means the background is in focus. Our subject's face is, sorry, our background is out of focus. Our subject is in focus. If this was shot at F16 or F11 and all of these lines were hard, sharp, in focus lines, uh, or if they were brighter, that would be an entirely different story. So I'm, I'm loving everything about this image except for the lack of separation down here. That's the only thing I would change. Oh, also just want to touch on the crops. She's got space. She's got space. Lots of room. She's not crowded in here at all. Okay, and our last one. So again, first thing, impact. Where do your eyes go when you look at this image for the first time? Sometimes cover your eyes and then look or do like the pros do, flip it upside down. My eyeballs go right down here. What about you? Obviously, she's being lit from this way. Uh, you can tell by, well, the light on her because we've got brightness over here, darkness over here. So the light is coming in from this way. This is an easy fix. Uh, I'm not sure what the light source is. I don't think I can zoom in and see enough of a catch light to tell. Nah. It looks like some kind of beauty dish, just the way the lines are a little bit hard there. Um, we're just getting a lot of spill on the wall that that could easily be removed. Uh, the light could be removed from the wall by just turning it more toward the camera so that it's not spilling on the wall. It's spilling out into the space between our subject here and the camera. Um, so let's look at crops. Pull up the grid. Good on a third, third, on a third, on a third. These are fantastic. That's well done. She's pretty crowded in there. Like look where the crop is. It's right at her knuckles and it, her toes might be cut off in there, but it's so dark. I can't see separation from the heels to the background. So having another, you know, rim light over here, or if you wanted light to be spilled on the wall, have it back here. Cause you want to alternate highlight shadow, highlight shadow. So when we've, we've got, let's say shadow on the wall, I mean, there's highlight now, but we would have shadow on the wall, highlight on the face, shadow on the side of the head, and then highlight on the wall would separate from the shadow on this side of the body. And you would get that like checkerboard pattern is what we want to go for. Also, the hands are balled up into fists, but it's a very soft face. If she was like angry making fists, that would be more contextually congruent. Um, but her hands should have been softer in here to match the the flow of her body and her facial expression. Also, I don't know if it's possible to just move this because it looks like the couch is right up against this basket. I can't tell if it's, it is a plant. Yeah, there's like a flower pot here, part of the tree. Also, the texture on this tree totally takes away from the face and the tattoos. So again, feathering the light so we don't have that spill. Remove these things that are in the frame that add texture but don't add to the image. Same thing with these back here. Like they fill the space, but it totally takes away from the subject. Uh, if you notice the wall behind me, the gap between my two black curtains, there's nothing on the wall there. When I first painted this room and made up my studio, I struggled to figure out what to put on the wall. There was a wreath there for a while, like a all seasons wreath. Uh, I tried a couple other different things to hang up there and all of them were too distracting. So I just took everything down and had that colored wall and now it's amazing. Zero distracting elements. Uh, it's just what I want to show off in the photo. So again, the same separation, we lose where her underwear meets the wall. 
same down here. We lose where she stops and where the couch starts. So adding that other light to shine down this way on the background will light the back of the couch as well. And that will create the separation from our subject here. It's a beautiful image. I'm sure she loved it. There's just distracting elements that are in there. Again, like these here. Give her some more space because she's cramped in at fingers and toes. And then adding that second light over here to create that separation. And yeah, this would turn this one up to 11. So well done. All right, that is how I do my image critiques. Hopefully you learned a lot from that. And remember, like I said in the beginning, a lot of us make the same mistakes. Most of these images have the same mistakes. Plus adding elements to an image for style that really took away from the image instead of complementing it. So think about that when you are building your own images. And if you would love to have your images critiqued, which I hope you do, email me, mike at boudoirguild.com, or you can join our Facebook group, which would be great also. And I will post in there when I'm going to be doing another critique and I ask for images to be sent in. So that's a great way to get reminders too. So send me up to five, no watermarks please, up to 2000 images on the longest side, and I would love to include them in the next image critique. I've got other ones on this channel as well for you to check out so you can learn a ton more. And again, send me your photos, I would love to include them. You are amazing, see you inside.